Next is the discount rate. This is one of the more subjective areas in all of 842. I highly recommend getting your auditors involved in this sooner rather than later because nothing would be worse to set up your entire infrastructure just for them to disagree with this discount rate. So companies should be using significant judgment when they're estimating their incremental borrowing rate. And if your company has had a recent financing transaction, with a stated interest rate, that is a wonderful line in the sand of where you may be able to start from. Then, if you have that, you can start looking at how the risk-free rate has changed over time and over tenure compared to that stated uh, financing rate to then develop your discount rate or your incremental borrowing rate going forward. Another suggestion that some people use is try to obtain third-party quotes from lending institutions. I certainly think this is easier said than done because not all third-party lending institutions want to give you those quotes. Private companies do have the option to use the risk-free rate as their discount rate. I think this is a lovely practical expedient offered under 842. The only downside of this is oftentimes the risk free rate is significantly lower than the company's incremental borrowing rate. What that will do is it will inflate the lease liability on the balance sheet, which will in turn inflate the right of use asset on the balance sheet. However, if you have operating leases only, there actually is not going to be an income statement impact. So it may be a wonderful uh, option for you guys to use. Uh, if you want to go that route. Uh, for our clients that are planning to go public in the next one, two or three years, they're holding themselves to the public company standards and they're actually outsourcing this to third party valuation firms just because they might not have all the tools and resources in house to figure out what their incremental borrowing rate is.